Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can draw a realistic eye study or any portrait just by using three different coloured pencils. So this eye study that you can see here was created with just three Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and also a white pencil for blending. And I'm going to show you exactly how I have done this. So if that's something you're interested in and you have a limited palette or limited supplies available to you, this is going to be your friend because as you can see, you can and create realistic artworks with just a few colored pencils so let's get straight into it the first thing I just want to mention is the line art so for all of my outlines for all of my drawings I use the grid drawing method I'm gonna leave a card up above and a link in the description for you guys so you can follow that tutorial and see exactly how I create an accurate outline before I actually begun adding any color or anything I needed to do some prep work for this and the prep work that you need to do is to choose your three colours, obviously. For this, I went for a blue, a green and a purple. And what you need to do with those colours is designate, designate them to light, medium and dark tones. So you can designate your colours however you want. You can do the obvious thing of using your lighter toned pencil for your lighter tones and the obvious darker colour for your dark tones. Or you can mix it up and use your dark colour for your light tones and your light colour for your dark tones. It's up to you. But what I did here was just I had a look at my reference photo and I identified where the light tones were and I identified what kind of pencil I wanted to use for that. So for, in this case I used the blue because it was actually the lightest of the coloured pencils that I have picked. And then the medium and dark tones, the tones of the green and the purple were pretty similar here so it was just a toss up as to which one I picked for the medium and dark tones. But again I looked at the reference photo and kind of looked at what would make sense so I picked the purple for the dark tones because I thought that would make a really nice kind of outer eye colour like um, adding it into the pupil and everything and then I picked the green for the medium tones which was present in a lot of the fur and the eye as well. So however you decide to designate your colours, you want to make sure that you stick to using those colours for those specific tones. Of course you can always go in and mix colours over the top of one another and it's a really good idea to swatch out some mixing tones. So what I did was just used all of the different colours and then mix them together so I mixed the all three colours together to see what tone I could get and then I mixed the purple and the green, the purple and the blue and the blue and the green and just to see kind of what different tones I could produce and what I could potentially use in some of the darker or lighter areas by mixing those colours together. So once I had done that prep work I can then start to apply all of this to the actual reference photo. A word of advice here is if you are using a reference photo and you're one of the people like myself when you're working in colour you like to have a black and white reference photo alongside you. This doesn't always translate well when using three specific colours or a limited palette like this. So if you do like working in black and white use just the black and white photo or use just the colour photo. Don't use a combination of both because it will confuse you and you can get different tones appear when you translate it to black and white so just use the color version or the black and white version to identify where your tones and all that need to go. So one of the first things that I did to start off this small study was actually use the purple color which I had designated as the dark tone and I used it to add the outline and the pupil and all of the dark areas around the outside of the actual eye. So the parts that would ordinarily be like um, a dark colour like you'd use a dark sepia or a walnut brown for. Those are the areas that I initially put down the purple for. And then to darken them up because I had swatched out some different layering varieties and some different colour combos I could see that adding the green on top made actually a really nice dark almost indigo blue colour so I added some green in there and just kept layering the purples and the greens to create a really nice dark tone. You can layer your colours like this you don't just have to stick to using the purple just in those dark areas and you can't necessarily add any other colours in. You can mix the colours together to create different tones so don't be worried about thinking oh I've only got three colours I must just use the purple in the dark area. You can mix them together which is why I layered and trialled out some colour combos down below just to see what you could come up with. So by mixing the purple and the green together you can see that I've got a really nice dark tone and by adding in the blue as well I just created an even darker more kind of deeper tone to those darker areas. I then went on to doing the tear duct area and this was a little bit more complex because this had lighter areas in it so where you have some lighter highlights 
I actually went in and added down a light base of my blue because that was what I designated for my light tones. Uh, the light tones also refer to like the white areas as well. So if there's any white areas, they were blue. So I put down the areas where I needed to with the blue to represent the light and then carried on with the purple to represent the rest of the tear duct and the darker area and again layered in some green. And I also used the white pencil, not necessarily to lighten any of the colours but just to blend them all together to get a really nice smooth appearance. It's quite difficult to blend colours together when you have a limited colour palette like this because you can end up going darker than what you necessarily need. So having that white pencil on hand will always lighten the colours but it will just help to blend them together as well and there's no harm in actually lightening a colour when you're doing this type of exercise but you want to avoid going uh, dark if it's not necessary because otherwise if you go too dark it's hard to take it back to a lighter tone. So just having a white pencil on hand will help with blending, um, not necessarily just introducing another colour or anything like that. Although you can use your white pencil to lighten up your lighter areas, which is what I will show you guys in a minute. So once the tear duct area was done, I then moved on to the actual iris. This was a really fun thing to do because it, it's always complicated and kind of almost frustrating to begin with when you start with just a limited colour of three because you're a little bit unsure as to what you should layer down and and what kind of order but I always go with the same principle of putting down the light tones and then building into the dark tones so I just applied that same principle to this study so I started off with my light tones which was the blue just using a really light pressure and shading in small circles and back and forth going in several different directions on the actual iris itself because you want a nice smooth appearance and blending with the white as well again to get it look looking really nice and smooth and get that glassy effect I then started to build in some green for the mid-tones, so as again as I designated the green for the medium tones I was adding that in where you've got a little bit more hint of a shadow and a little bit of like a darker tone. And then I went in with the purple into the really dark areas around the iris, so around the outer edges and into the pupil a little bit more and any kind of details I could see, you've got like these wiggly eye worms, so I used the purple to add those in and again added in some green as well to create a slightly darker tone like the outer edges of the eye and the tear duct area as well. The highlight that you can see in the iris, it looks quite white but it's actually a very very pale shade of blue so I used my light tone, the blue, blended it with the white and then by adding in some darker colours around it, it made it appear really really white although when you look close it is actually a blue tone so you can see that it can be quite deceiving just by adding in some colours around it. You can create some really nice white looking areas even though they are actually a different colour. So for the fur, now this reference that I used was actually a tabby cat and I chose a tabby cat because it has different varieties and different tones of the fur. So if you're familiar with tabby cats they have these like white or light areas of fur right around the eye so you've got that dark stark contrast of the outer eye edge and then this lighter fur around the outside so that was actually really nice to do because it's nice and easy to blend I used the blue for the lighter fur it used a really light pressure and then where I had the shadows in the fur and some slightly darker fur lines I then started to add in a little bit of the green to get a bit more of a turquoise colour, so a deeper blue, and then adding in a little bit of purple, which created this kind of dark indigo colour uh, for some really, really dark shadowy areas and some darker fur lines, like in, right into the root of the fur is where you can see some of those areas. Also with tabbies, you have the dark tabby markings along the forehead and above the eye and below the eye. So you've got that lovely light coloured fur directly around the outer edge of the eye and then you've got all of these lovely markings and you can use the colours in a variety of combinations to create some interesting colours and to create an interesting fur texture. So for the darker areas again I just added down the light blue so I'm still following the same kind of principle as what I would use if I'm using a variety of colours so working from light to dark so adding down that blue as the light base layer, so representing the lightest tones within the fur. And then going in with the green, a little bit more of a heavy hand with the green and the 
blue in the kind of shadowy areas where you do have those really dark markings so you can afford to be a little bit more heavy handed apply a little bit more pressure to your colored pencil to really get a darker tone and then adding in some purple and creating those really dark tones from those color swatches and color combinations that i did at the very beginning so as you can see i managed to obtain a really dark stripe just above the eye um, and then continued it into doing some more stripes using a really hard pressure on the darkest toned pencil so that purple one to really create some dark tones and some dark values and then using some of the other colors so the blue and the green just to blend it out and to uh, kind of get a really nice kind of feathery effect so even though you do have three colors you still do need to blend out some of your areas so they're not just like stop start so using the green pencil the mid tone will help with that and also using an increased pressure on the blue pencil as well mixed with that green will create that nice turquoise which will create a nice uh, different kind of mid tone to help to blend everything out together with the fur in the lighter areas as i mentioned there are some strokes of purple and some green and those are just added in with a really light hand and where you do have some darker values in there you can afford to use a little bit more pressure like you've done with the darker stripes and everything through the top of the head and in the tear duct area that kind of that kind of pressure you want to use so the actual fur technique and the system of working stays exactly the same you don't need to change that when you're working with just a limited palette like this you just want to keep your light hand at first to slowly build up the colors you want to keep a nice flicked edged for your fur line and you want to work light to dark as you would with any other colored pencil piece so the principles of your colored pencil drawings are exactly the same it's just a little bit daunting at first working with three colors but as you can see you do actually get a really nice effect and you can obtain some element of realism Obviously the colours aren't realistic in this particular piece but the actual ex execution and the way in which it looks is realistic so although you are using some unusual colours you can get a realistic look so even if you guys at home have like an orange, a pink and a blue pencil and that is all you have and you want to create some realistic drawings you can absolutely do that you just need to make sure that you designate your colors to light medium and dark tones obviously if you have a few more colored pencils like four or five then you can add in a few more other tones as well and in which case it would be good to use a black and white reference photo uh, rather than a color photo because then that will be easier to see but you can absolutely create realism and colored pencil pieces with just a small limited palette it's really really easy and it's actually a really good exercise because it because it gets you used to looking at values and looking objectively at a reference photo rather than looking at each individual color in there so i really hope that you guys give this a go it is a really good exercise and i do genuinely recommend that you do have a go if you want to be a little bit more kind of coddled and have your hand held through it then this is actually available on my patreon and on my club puffin website you've got the full hour and a half tutorial if you want to follow it in real time with narration and i explain exactly what i'm doing with the color de designation and the color mixing and all of that kind of stuff so head on over there the links are in the description um, and check those out if you want to learn more about colored pencils and studies like this one but thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next video bye